Hello, IXL kids. We love and miss you. We wish we could be together. But since we can't, we want to come to you every week and give you a little bit of what you would have got if you were here in IXL Sunday School. We praying that the scientists and the government uh, find the, the cure, the antidote, the vaccine, whatever it takes to get y'all back in school. Can I get an amen from mom and dad? <laughs> All right, so, um, but seriously, we want you to be practicing social distancing, keeping safe until we can get this behind us and put this past us and we can get back together and love and hug each other. But until then, air five, air hug, air fist bump, whatever you have to do to stay six to 25 feet away from the next person. <laughs> that The 25 feet is mine, but make sure y'all just practicing being safe, all right? So uh, this month, the whole month, we're learning about humility. And you can think of humility as putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. In this time where everybody is concerned about you know what what are we gonna do you know some people are concerned about their money about their food you know even even i heard at walmart they were fighting over toilet paper toilet paper toilet paper all right and this time you know we don't have to be concerned about that we should be believing that God is taking care of us, right? That's what we learned and that's what us as Christians should be explaining to everybody else out in this world. Uh, even before this pandemic, we were pretty short on humility in this world. You know, I'm a big basketball fan and I think a lot of y'all are too, uh, but after they make a good shot, you see a whole lot of this. And all of that, and even even when uh, a, a running back runs a touchdown, you know, you see them celebrating, doing they dancing and stuff like that. But I'm a big fan of the basketball celebration when they do this, giving God praise, right? And I'm a, I'm a, a fan of the football when they when they celebrate when the running back makes a touchdown or something, and then he tells the linemen to come over, everybody come over, and he hands the linemen the, the football so he can slam the ball, right? That, that's, that's, cause there's always a lot more people involved in your success that you could probably give them a little credit for, right? So this week in our lesson, the bottom line is put others first, all right? We wanna practice putting others first uh, our story shows Jesus and he's knows it's right about the time where he knows that he has to go through a whole lot of things and be put to death. And he's in the, the Garden of Gethsemane and he has his best friends with him. And his best friends couldn't even pray one hour with him. So I want you guys to take a look at this video and Think about how Jesus must have felt when he was going through this time and he couldn't even depend on his best friends to put him first. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 36 through 56. For months, the Jewish religious leaders had been plotting to silence Jesus. He called us pretenders, snakes. On the Sunday before Passover, Jesus entered Jerusalem to great cheers from the crowds. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. But even as the crowd swarmed in to see what Jesus would do and say, one of Jesus' closest followers, Judas, went to the religious leaders with a very sneaky plan. 
What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? How about a cool 30 pieces of silver? Jesus knew these plans, but he also knew that his mission was to face those who hated him and let them take him without defending himself. He prepared his closest friends for this during a Passover meal and then afterwards led them out of the city toward the Mount of Olives. Judas had already left them. In a little while, you will no longer see me. Then after a little while, you will see me. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. The air cooled as the evening darkened. This very night, you will all turn away because of me. Peter, the most outspoken of Jesus' friends, quickened his step and tightened his hand on the sword he was carrying. All the others may turn away because of you, but I never will. What I'm about to tell you is true. It will happen tonight. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. I may have to die with you, but I will never say I don't know you. Me too. Same. Oh. <sighs> By the time Jesus and his friends reached the Garden of Gethsemane, they were exhausted. Sit here while I go over there and pray. As the other disciples settled in on the cold, rough ground, Jesus took Peter, James, and John along with him to a grove of ancient olive trees. The weight of what was coming pressed down on him. My soul is very sad. I feel close to death. Stay here. Keep watch with me. We're here for you. We got this. Prayers. The three friends found seats among the knotted tree roots, and Jesus went on a little further. Then suddenly, he fell down on the ground, face first into the dirt. Words poured out from deep inside. My father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. But let what you want be done, not what I want. After a short time, Jesus returned to his friends. They had all fallen into restless sleep. Jesus touched Peter's arm. What? Huh? Just, uh, we're just, uh, we're just praying. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray. Then you won't fall into sin when you are tempted. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. We'll stay awake this time. Got you covered. Again, Jesus threw himself down to pray. His pain was so deep, blood and sweat beaded on his forehead. My father... Is it possible for this cup to be taken away? But if I must drink it, may what you want be done. Jesus returned to his friends once more to find them still sleeping. The agony in his spirit forced Jesus to lay his heart out to God once more. He prayed the desperate words again, begging God to take away what was coming. And at the same time, revealing his complete trust in God's plan. Let what you want be done, not what I want. At last, Jesus knew the time had come. He returned to find Peter, James, and John buried deep in sleep. Beyond them, his other followers slept too. Are you still sleeping and resting? The disciples struggled through a fog of sleep, blinking and yawning. Below them, torchlight showed an angry mob climbing up the hill. The men were waving swords and clubs, shouting as they came. Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is about to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Here comes the one who is handing me over to them. Jesus' friends staggered to their feet, and Peter clutched his sword. As the mob marched closer, they could see the man in front of the mob. It was their friend Judas. Judas, what are you doing? The mob had been sent by the Jewish religious leaders. Judas had already explained to them that he would greet Jesus with a kiss, so they would know exactly which man to arrest. Greetings, teacher. Judas ignored the other disciples and went directly to Jesus, kissing him on the cheek in greeting. Jesus drew back and looked Judas directly in the face. Friend, do what you came to do. The mob surged forward as the disciples just stood there, frozen and confused. As men grabbed Jesus, Peter suddenly sprang to life, awkwardly drawing his sword. Should we use our swords? Peter didn't wait for an answer, but he struck out wildly. His blade sliced right through the ear of the high priest's servant. Oh! Stop this! 
Jesus touched the servant's ear. Immediately he was healed. Put your sword back in its place. Do you think I can't ask my father for help? He would send an army of more than 70,000 angels right away. But then how would the scriptures come true? They say it must happen in this way. Jesus turned back to the mob and the men who held him. They hovered there, uncertain, in the flickering light of their torches. Am I leading a band of armed men against you? Do you have to come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courtyard teaching, and you didn't arrest me. But all this has happened so that the words of the prophets would come true. No one could respond to Jesus. Instead, they arrested him and led him away. And his friends who said they'd be with him through anything ran away. Jesus made the choice that would bring life to everyone, but that would cost him everything. Oh, I was just taking a little nappy nap, like the disciples. They were, they couldn't even pray for one hour. They couldn't put Jesus first for one hour. He gave them all the loaves and the fishes. He healed some of their family. And when it's, it was time for him, he needed something. They couldn't even pray for one hour. One of them, I mean, at least they could have did was be on the lookout, say, hey, Jesus, hey, they coming, you know. But they, they couldn't even do that. But, but Jesus still, he went forth and he did what he had to do. Even if he had to do it alone, he knew that God was with him. So um, this week, uh, your homework assignments is practice putting others first. Practice putting others first. Practice putting your mother. She might ask you to do something and you might be busy playing Fortnite or whatever it is you're doing, but see what she needs and, and do that. Practice, even try to practice putting your siblings first. Now that's a hard test, ain't it? But practice letting them do something they want to do or watch something on the TV where you're trying to watch something, but practice putting others first. We want to follow Jesus' example. All right? Until next week, we'll see you and stay safe.